Hi everyone, Tris here. This is Double Nail, and on this video, we are going to start building a fresh new Double Gauge layout. I have set myself this task with the objective to have it running and exhibiting at the Kettering Model Railway Club Open Day on the 4th of June. This is all part of the Jubilee celebration that the club is running, and we're going to have the club layout out, and it's going to be open for people to come and see what we've been up to from the village people can come and from out of town you can come so you'll be welcome to come i will be leaving some more details in the description what are we building well it's a 70 by 130 centimeter layout which features a station engine shed and a goods yard these are all small though because this is a small layout so i'm not going to have an excessive amount going on with this i want to keep it simple so at the back of the layout we'll have some kind of storage yard area which I'll show you a bit more in a bit and that's going to be great with an angle back scene going there so this episode is going to focus purely on baseboard building and laying the track so as you see here I've been building up a frame which will be attaching itself to the five millimeter ply board which I've got B&Q to kindly cut up for me you give them your sizes if you pick a big sheet you can get five cuts for free and then after that, it's 50p a cut. Um, that's fantastic. I actually have to go out of town for this. My local b and doesn't do it. Whilst doing this, make sure your cat supervises you and offers you some strokes. Head you're coming past. It's always nice to say hello. They always enjoy that. And that's Groot, if you're wondering. Rocket does appear from time to time. The monkey he is. That's Groot coming back, just making sure I'm gluing things properly. But I'm running a bead of glue around the frame that I've built up. I've just matched the size, also mopped up any glue that's on the floor. It's just double checking for anything else that might be there. Then we stick the board on. Any boards that go down, he tries to go underneath them as I'm doing it, but fortunately in this case, I close it just in time. I don't need to leave this to dry, so to speak, because I can continue with the process. I put this on and the next step is to use a drill and make some holes and then we can screw it on in place. The benefit of the glue, I feel, is it kind of just makes everything a bit more solid and the screws mean that if it gets flexed too much, it's not gonna pop apart from the glue. But hopefully the combination of the two would be good. You could use nails, but for me with nails, make it a racket, next door would hear me. I'm doing this in the house on a flat surface. In the garage, I've got a dusty concrete floor and I felt, Let's do this in my house, which I'm going to make messy, which starts out clean, but this floor is pretty flat. So from there, um, we want to look at adding the supports that go underneath. So what I wanted to do was have a central strip that goes down underneath, and then we'll have two pieces that go over at each side. So you end up having um, just a bit more support for the track uh, when you put, you know, start nailing in the track or leaning on it. You could imagine this is going to be a bit of a bouncy, not bouncy castle, but like a trampoline, but without the elasticity. So we get it, we can stick them down like this. Um, what you'll, uh, you'll find is that um, it's a little bit tricky cutting these little grooves, but it's worth doing. I was going to have um, two each side of the central beam, but I didn't need to have that, which was nice, because um, I cut a little slot, um, as you'll see in the wood, and it means that it slots together and... I guess it's a little bit stronger and it looks kind of smart when you're putting it together like this and it doesn't take much you just cut out two lines and then just chisel out the bit that's in between and it's pretty simple after that and then we just drop in our other piece my plan is to obviously let this glue dry but i will be marking out some lines so then we can put some screws in from the top um, to hold it in place but whilst it dries because i need it to kind of get to a certain point so it doesn't drop out um, i put some tins on Obviously, it's at your discretion. I've got various <laughs> different types that are on there. And now I just pop some screws in, nice and simply, and it's not going anywhere. And that's it. So it's a bit stronger. I think some from the side as well, just to make it a bit stiffer. Later, I will add in some more, but you've got to consider where your points are going to be. You don't want to put any of these underneath where your points are going to be, because if you want to have a point motor... There's a lot of points there. If you want to have a point motor, you'll have trouble getting that in that area. So I already knew what I wanted to do with the layout first before I did this. After that, I put the sides on, which will add some more height to it. And it keeps that height there without adding lots of weight. 
So that is our board. It's a good size, actually fits on the table reasonably well. I'm using Hornby Magazine Grey. It's not actually a colour, but they like to use grey. And I always like it because of how everything looks. Um, once you start adding track and cork and things, it looks really neat and tidy. So I like to call it that. But it's from Wix. It's 215 on the paint number. It's just a grey. Any grey will probably do. Um, and yeah, inspired by the Hornby Magazine. So thanks, guys. I'm sure you're not watching, but if you were, that's because of you. Okay, so we've given it a paint and we're going to load up anywhere. And I'm going to show you a brief guide of how to use it. I'm using the trial version and I've only used it a few times now, but it's quite quick to pick up. We go into settings and then over here you have the length and the width of the track. So it's in centimeters. So if it's one meter, it's 100 centimeters. Nice and simple. So I'm going 130 centimeters by 70, which makes it tight. Um, so you could just fit in first radius if you want but I want to have much tighter than that. So then I load up on the track libraries, the AA gauge and the HO sections. And what you'll find is you've got lots of set track bits here. Um, and it's nice and simple the way it goes in. So you just kind of drag and drop if you want, or you click on it and it appears on the screen. So you click on it once, there it goes. You click on it a few more times and more turn up. I want to have three of these, which is a right hand. And you'll see as it hovers over the top, a little blue dot pops up to say, hey, do you want to connect to this? And you let go and it will do it. If it's not in the position you want, you can move things around. Once you're connected, if you're not happy that you've connected it all funny, like, oh no, you right click um, on the mouse, you click disconnect, it disconnects, fine. You hover over the right bit, it pops on nicely. What you can do is a couple of other options. Uh, is you can twizzle it round with this little green bit at the top nice to whatever angle you want or you hover it over the other end and it'll pop it on that way it's kind of cool if you don't like it you disconnect and then you just hover over the bit that you want to connect to and it pops on nice and easy um, so for this end I'm gonna then have a left hander which actually connects to the radius that comes from the loop that's gonna be coming around and then you can position the whole lot if you're not happy you disconnect things and you start again with certain bits but it's quite nice it's very user friendly if you've not used it before I'd actually put off using it for a while thinking I don't need that and I also thought maybe it's a bit too complicated for me but it's honestly not it's quite an enjoyable piece of software to use so I get out my Y sections all set track again I'm keeping my layout nice and simple so if you wanted to you could kind of match what I'm doing if you wanted to I'm sure you'd probably want to do something much more fun than what I'm doing so that's our all our points that are going to be on the layout are here now. Then you go into track libraries and you want to load up the bit which is mainly for the HO section. And that's got flexi track on it. And that's really cool. And you've got all the big points and things you see with all the part numbers that Pico sell. So you can go and get these bits afterwards. So I get my flexi track out and it's great. You can set the lengths of these and you can set the curves of them. So I just want to make a, let's call it a shorter piece. It might be too long, it might be too short, it doesn't really matter. You can change it to whatever you want, it's now shorter. If you want to, you can also change its radius. If you hit copy on your keyboard, control copy, control paste, you can get more of them. So I want to use one of these there, I don't want to use pieces of set track. Um, and so I connect on where I want to have these pieces. And all you do is grab these little crosses, you bring it across, and you can just move it. It's flexible track. If you go too far, it goes red. So if you go and stretch it, it doesn't like it. And if you squeeze it up too much as well, it doesn't like it either. So be considerate about what you do in real life. So if I grab this, I can snap it to where I want to go around. You can see it go red where it's too tight on the radius. And I've got this one, and I want to connect it not to there. That's the wrong place. What I do is I hit disconnect on here. And we're going to connect it to the right place so we've got to reconnect it so we just grab that cross pop it onto there and grab this one and it kind of gives you a half decent you know compound radius you know it's not a singular radius you've got um lots of compounding curves coming in there basically this is what my set track's gonna to have to go through there's that horrible red line there is the radius it's going to go through and that's tough it's not going to be happy with that um, I don't know if that's a 20 centimeter radius, but my O4Os, which are the only locos that are going to be going on it, will survive, or well, I hope so. We're going to do a video on that shortly, or be part of this video, in fact. So you can see how easy that was. We'll go grab another one, and all we do is we go and attach that to it. 
So if I want to curve it nice and easy, I want to go 90 degrees, which is the maximum. And what radius? Okay, 250. And you can see what it's done there. So nice and simple when you do that. Um, again, you can spin it round, you can do whatever you like. But I'm going to be attaching it how I want. You can see there, it's kind of kind of good. But anyway, we drag it to what I want. We've got our crosses, and it allows you to manipulate the shape you want. And it gives you an idea of, can I do this? What are the issues? And can I do more? When you start doing this, you can start feeling like the, the whole layout's cluttered. And it might well be. Uh, some of the nicest layouts that I see are just the simple ones of just either a single track going through with a point or two. And so mine's going to be simple. It's got two Y points. You've got an area which would be for the goods and an area which would be for the engine shed, which I can then have a little small coaling stage. or well, not a stage, but yeah, a point to get coal. There'll be water. The good shed will be a nice simple one by Backman. I found a really nice one at Tony's Trains for Rugby, which is where I'm going to be getting all of my points. Um, and going raiding his shop for everything else that I need. So um, I'm looking forward to, to going there and getting some inspiration. So yeah, just manipulate it. Ultimately, this is a guide. When you come to do it for in real life, it might not be as easy, but you can print all of this off, stick it down on your board, and go over the top of it. I've kind of gone on a halfway house when I do it, but you'll see very soon how I went about doing it. I only wanted it for those angles for the radiuses. Everything else I knew what to do. And this right hand side bit, that's just purely for my um, engine shed, it'll be a single one. I've got an old Hornby one from the Scaledale range, which I picked up, must be about three, four years ago, maybe longer, um, when I was kind of um and ah about the idea of getting back into model railways from when I was a little boy. Um, it's something that uh, it's taken me some time to get to. With this, you can see um, that those crosses start overlapping um, and they're not happy when I, when I do that. So I shift them out of the way um, and I go and drop it into what will be my it'd be my fiddle yard, effectively. Or I guess it's a fiddle yard. You know, I copy and paste them, bring them over, and then you can manipulate them to heart's content. Um, I will be putting a point in on one of them to add because I've got maximum room there. So I can drop that in, go from there. Things that you might put things on decide that it's not right for you, then change the point or whatever. Um, but ultimately, this program is excellent for you probably maybe saving some money on points, um, working out what you like, and you can have a little figure out the shunting capability of everything. And whilst I was doing this, I kind of had a good feeling about what I was doing. And I also like to do some more layouts on here. I've been mocking up some from some of my friends that want to do some layouts, and they've got a bit of room, and I'm like, right. I'll figure something out for you. With the trial version, one of the main limitations is the amount of pieces you can put on. You can only put 50 pieces on, and that might include, I guess, trees and all sorts. So if you only want to stick to the trial version, you need to probably do your hour in sections on here. Um, and then, oh, you know, if you want to do more, then you bite the bullets. I'm putting on a back scene here, just a basic line to figure out what it is, but the back scene will go across and then down, it hopefully give the eye something different to look at. I don't want to just have a straight one across the back. I like my layout to look like it's not necessarily a complete tail chaser and have that roundy roundy approach, uh, which is great in some cases, but for me, it'd be nice to have something that looks, I don't know, just like a little thing that comes through. And then we've got our trees. I'm just dropping some in just for some fun, just to imagine some there. Uh, we are going to have a small halt station in here um, and some other bits. So there's only so much room for trees. But I like to have some banked, um, you know, scenery going up uh, to the back scene with a, a bridge over the top of each of the um, portals for the tunnels for where it goes through the back scene. So some of it might be hidden by trees. We're not sure yet. We'll see what happens. But like you can see, you can mess around with it, you can have a lot of fun and get to the point that you can be quite satisfied with all of this. If you really want to, there is a 3D view option on here, so you can click on that. I didn't see the trees when I clicked on it before, um, so you just get this view here. Great, you get an idea of how it's going to look in front of you when you're standing in front of it, so great. Back to 2D, and that's it. Next step. We're going to cut out all the cork for all the points and bits and bobs I bought from Tony's Trains. And that's going to be nice and simply done. We get the cork. I'm using 
uh, eighth of an inch or three millimeter or 3.175 to be precise millimeter thick cork and you don't have to use cork when you're doing this the benefits of cork is from my point of view it allows for discrepancies in the heights of boards and things it kind of softens the blow it gives you a bit of a shoulder for your ballast when you put it on um, and the other bit is it quietens things down but once you go and put things like ballast on with some really hard glues you know like PVA and that when they they dry um, you end up having um, probably the same sound um, I know Charlie from Chadwick Model Railway um, uses I, th is it, I think it's watered down copy decks I'm not sure exactly um, but if you use a rubberized glue it would help kind of let the cork do what it wants to do once the ballast is in place and then you've also got the pins that we're using to hold the tracks down if you take them out afterwards it also reduce some of the noise but these things don't make a racket but the only benefit of you know improving the noise ability is when you're running sound logos so you can actually hear them if all you can hear is wheels click to clack click to clack going over the tracks then there's an argument that you would appreciate it um, if it was a little bit quieter so you can hear it once I cut out my strips which are matching the width of my track I'll go slightly wider each side and then slice them in half because when we go around corners two half pieces make the job so much easier because I don't want to waste loads of um, cork by having a, a curve and then slice out that section of curve and then come back in so I like to make use of every little bit of cork I've got well almost every bit on these bits you do get waste to, to do that you'll see more very shortly after that I work out all my points nice and simple I mark out a a shape um, and then we cut them out it's really simple using a sharp scalpel so you don't cut yourself uh, work along the line and just make sure I do a nice little cut it's not too hard if you really wanted to maybe you can use scissors on these but we'll see a, a, you know a Stanley knife blade as long as it's sharp it'd be good but anyway I've been to Tony's Trainers of Rugby and I picked up a bunch of set track points I've got the Y section ones and some left hand ones I've got left hand and right hand sorry I think three right hand one left hand he happened to have the right quantities of everything I needed he wasn't sure if he had enough of the side that I needed and I couldn't remember um, but it turned out I did alright so this is the layout this is actually an older layout that I'd worked out the one that I've drawn for you is actually what I've ended up doing so you can print it out on a bunch of sheets and you can lay it out and get an idea let's say in real life um, how it's gonna look and you can decide if you want to change it I taped it all together and then I taped it down with masking tape because um, normal sellotape doesn't hold it down to the layout and then what I wanted to do the only reason I wanted this up apart from to visualize is to mark out my curves that are going to be on here so I can get them right and see where we're going to start with the points and that's it and then I'll be ripping off afterwards just using a pen I wanted to mark all the area that the curves are going to be and then we're going to add in our cork afterwards and work out something nice with the cork but just the sharpie run that along you don't have to do it this way there's like 10 million different ways of doing these things but if you want to do you could put the cork on and then stick this to the cork and then hammer your track through the top of this is my thoughts which is what I'd do next time and then you could peel this out from underneath the track if you want to do Groot comes to supervise he's not really paying much attention to that he's looking outside I'm doing this in the kitchen now so I've got a good height and my hobby room doesn't give me that kind of space to work on things but I think he's happy but he's observing for a little bit longer cat's help is always a uh, welcome but anyway sharpie it's doing a good job I've gone to the other side now uh, this side has I think more of a consistent arc around it whereas the other side has a longer straight section I just peel it all off nice and simply and it will feel like a waste of paper and I'm afraid it is but that's what I've done then putting these tracks together you've got two fish plates you line them up to the tracks or, for, or track joiners not fish plates or maybe it's the same thing slot them together drop it onto the layout and you'll see where it's going to go and I just want to mark around here because then we'll know where we want to stick down our cork afterwards and I'm marking it out with a pen because I'm going to be using copy decks on here and again I'm using copy decks partly because of Charlie from Chadwick Model Railway he's one of the people that I, I watch and it's nice because you put it on one side and then on the other side that you're going to be sticking to let that dry a bit and then just stick it together you get one chance but it's brilliant I'll mark around my point motors and because these are going to attach to the bottom of the 
point, I'll be cutting a hole in this board for them to drop through. And then later on, we're going to be blocking the hole up. So I drilled some holes uh, with the drill. <laughs> and then using a jigsaw, I work my way through and I cut out our little square until it's good. Just watch your fingers. Make sure you're wearing eye protection when you're doing this. Try not to breathe in the dust. To make it easier, I drilled a few more holes in this one. But it's a nice, easy job. Pops out there. But we do have to do some modification after doing it with a file. I used the Gauge Master ones in the end, so this is the Pico one, but I didn't have many of them. And I bought the more modern, arguably more modern, it's probably the same age as the Pico ones in reality. Um, the Gauge Master ones, which are chrome plated with nice writing, they're pre wired as well, so you just screw some wires into it, which is great. You know, it makes things easier for me anyway. Alright, I clean this all up with a sanding block, and then I put some nice copy decks on which smells like fish paste uh, in school we used to use this we used to hate the smell of it and we used to have fun kind of going oh right, we open up the pot um, but yeah we paint it onto the cork it works very very well and we give it kind of 15 20 minutes until it's almost touch dry sometimes i'm impatient so it goes on a bit gooey still but it still does the job see how some bits have gone clear some bits haven't we drop it over the top and if you want to move it afterwards you don't really get much choice so if you don't want to do it this way you'd have to put on the copy decks and then put a weight over the top but this means i can just stick them on it's it it's done it's not going anywhere um, the benefit on this over PVA glue is PVA glue I find takes ages to dry when I do it. And then even though I had cut out all my shapes, I kind of messed up a bit. And so I just thought, because I've messed up, um, I'll stick it on this big rectangle. Because no one's going to see it apart from me, who's going to be behind the layout. And anyone that's helping me, my friend Zach's offered to help me on the day to come and do it. So uh, he'll be hidden behind there with me. Now, just like we did before, we've let it dry. And I run it around, you can see here, I haven't had to put pins and things in. Apart from that bit, um, it wasn't quite dry enough when I stuck it down. I should have been more patient. So I pop two pins in, um, and then we do the next bit. That's nice and easy. We work around. It's nice and quick here. It takes a little bit of time. But I put a little bit of weight on it just to make sure it stayed, because I was being impatient with the sticking. Because I've only got so much time to do this, so I was kind of rushing through a little bit. And you can see here, it's dried a bit there. It's gone clear. And I come around here nice and easy see that looks easy doesn't it when it's sped up <laughs> i love it if it didn't take me this long or it did take me this long sorry now the next stage is to snip out the area which the points would have the point motors go through and you'll be thinking that's a massive hole and it, it is a big hole and you'll be thinking that's a disaster but it's not we're going to be using a mixture of masking tape there's the gauge master point motors masking tape and cork to sort that out these are nice they pop through the pico bits on these four pins and the central pin which does the moving actually just pops through and it holds it there and then you just twizzle the bits that have poked through because it's quite soft um, and that holds it in place and hopefully these can get disguised um, once it's all been painted up and I've put some sleeper grimy brownie colours on there hold in place because these have the connector underneath though I will have to do some modification to the board to get it through won't go through all the way um, as much as you might push and pull and stuff like that you need to have room for it and you also need to add the wires first before putting it in the issue is is the 5 mil thick area um, if I want to get a screwdriver to it once it's in there I've got no chance. I'd have to have so much material re removed, it would have been just a bit silly. So really that connector could do have been a bit further down or pointing a different angle for the screw holes. So I've attached my screw, um, my <laughs> wires, not screws, um, wires to it. I've got black for my common and then the green and yellow are for whichever way it's going to switch. And that will be wired up on the next episode, which will be all about electronics. So come back for that. So I drop it in place. Nice and simple going in there and then we do the other one and then it's together we're just popping in some pins now um i'm using some of the i think i can't remember these are by now i, I want to say gauge master um the board is only five mil thick so i try not to beat it up too much when i'm doing it um but once you're through it's good i only pop them in so far to begin with and then once i've got the flexi track in place i'll hammer them all through all the way you can see the uh, camera bouncing around because it's sitting on the board when I'm doing this. But these are going to be rigid in place, and it means that I can then crack on with the rest of it. Now, the points are there. We're going to put our flexi track on, which some people I know don't find this fun. And I would argue that I don't find this fun either. 
Um, but once you've had a bit of a messing around, it's fine. If you get some Zuron track cutters, they do well for snipping it to size. And I file up the edges that have then been kind of messed around with um, with the snipping. Um, so that's quite important. Otherwise, it's quite hard to put the track joiners back on. But as I go, every few sleepers, so to begin with something with this third one across, I do the third and then the 20th and so on. So then we can hold a nice arc going around. We don't want to have any kinks and we don't want any sudden sharp radiuses going in. Otherwise, you're just going to get some, well, derailing and decoupling from various things. And so I just pop in a pin. I tap it in gently with a hammer and that's in there. And then we work our way around. It's a simple process. You need to take your time. You'll find when you bend the curve, um, you might then have a changing in length of the bit that's by the point. So you just need to adjust that. And you can use the pliers to gently push it back up, ready for when you get to this stage, which is also a tricky step, where you want to try and poke that in there. So you've got your joiners in there, you poke it together, and now we've got it. You can see I've got my tightest part of the radius on each end. So we'll test it. I've got this small Hornby Peckett lovely little logo i do really like it um i still never really did much with it i bought it because it looked nice more than that if it's in the great western things but that comes along here the handrail is a bit bent up there i'll get that fixed and it comes around it has no trouble see around the tight bits here yeah no trouble but it's an 040 with a short wheel base it should work the next step would be to go to a larger 040 which is my hornby um, chassis, double O'Neill designs, bodied um, loco. It's like a, I like to see it, it's like a baby prairie. I know it doesn't have the wheel allocation of a prairie, but I've given it that kind of look. It's got a mix of that and, and an Ivet. Um, and yeah, it's nice. If you want one of these, check out the websites. Um, and that seems quite happy going round, going over the points, everything's running well. And around the last awkward bit, this is the awkward bit, it rotates quite quickly around here. And the next one that I want to put on, which will be similar to my Terrier, in regards to three, well, six wheels, or three axles, um, loco, is the 1366. I ran this one a little bit faster because it's a Hellian 1, which a bit of a poor runner if I'm honest. Nothing like some of the other locos I've got. Um, but it looks nice, so I keep them. And this had no trouble getting around it. As long as there's a lot enough lateral movement in the axles, I think it's all alright um, when it goes round. So we're fine. Um, well, we'll find out what happens. So that's those three. I'm happy with them. I can't complain. I then work on the next step. I put in the uh, engine shed area. Again, like what you saw before. It's nice and simple. We get our copy decks. We paint our area with it, just looks like white paint all the time um, and once we've covered that area we let that dry and obviously I've already coated the cork bits and then once that's done it sticks on nice and easy and if you do it right you shouldn't need any weights or extra pins or anything like that, it should just go on really really easily um, so while I'm doing this I've got bits dripping everywhere but the nice thing about copper decks actually when it sticks in the wrong place you can once it's dry you rub it with your finger and it comes off so easily um, it's just this rubberized glue right that's gone all tacky now and just run it down I rub it in as um, I'm putting it down just to make sure it definitely holds but it's easy much easier than PVA glue I'm sure there's other ways to do this that may be even easier I mean, spray glue but that goes everywhere um, or maybe that's good you have to try that spray it in the cork let it go tacky and then stick it on but anyway that's something for another day we can play with can't we but if you haven't done any of this before, don't be afraid of it. You don't have to use cork if you don't want to. You can just go straight to a piece of wood. Um, there's just a few benefits from when you use cork, but it shouldn't stop you from building a railway if that bit scares you off. Just stick the track down, go and have some fun. That's the important thing. Um, I've been doing this for a little while now, so I've got a little bit more confidence doing this than maybe a beginner would. So with that done and in place, we'll go check out the other bits that we're doing so i'm doing the storage yard area here nice and simple just stick it down put some pins in it's a bit wet here i'm getting it all over my fingers but that's fine and we'll add the track onto that as well uh, it's nice and simple we're gonna have three points there I, I would actually like to go back since doing this 
um, and do a, another little section on it. But we'll see. I'll put the back scene on and see what happens. Just means I can have more locos ready to go for when I've got our open day that um, I'll be going to to help out the club, which will be good fun. This is where our good shed will be going. We'll be dropping in this section here, going down to the back. I want to have a little bit of a run down to the good shed. I don't know, there's something nice about that. But I'm sure most of this isn't realistic, so it's free game for what I do. So don't forget, this is meant to be fun. Enjoy it. It'll be really rewarding once you've got the whole thing together. That's one thing that I'm looking forward to. So I've got a lot of enthusiasm to get this done. So the last little bit I wanted to do was block up these gaps for when I put ballast on later on. You don't have to put ballast on, um, but for me, it makes it look really, really nice and, well, like the real thing, that's what you really want to. So I put bits of cork in. I also use some blue masking tape and then glue it in place with a bit of copy decks just to hold it there. And then when we put the ballast over the top, it's not going to fall down that big hole underneath. Of course, when we do points, we do need to be careful. Um, because we can actually stop the action of the points if we're not careful. I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons and channel members. If you'd like to become one, then check out the link below. Um, you can hit the join button if you want to, but if not, hit the subscribe button. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you'll join me on the next episode, which will be focusing on the electronics of the board. And we'll have a bit of loco running just to make sure everything works and have some fun with shunting and bits and bobs. And we'll also talk about how the layout will be going in regards to the um, kind of buildings and bits that are going on it. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you there. Cheers. Bye bye.